but there is actually one or two things I wanted to touch about today. And the first one is going to be soul sleep. What does the Bible say about soul sleep? Do we have a soul or are we a soul? Is the soul immortal or is the soul mortal? So let's take a quick look at his take on this one. Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is the Open Veil TV. We are back with another video. Um, today we're going to talk about a, an interesting topic from a gentleman who actually was asked a question about Seventh-day Adventism. Are they a Christian or cult? And I've been seeing a lot of that, a lot of that lately. People wondering, are Seventh-day Adventists cult or Christian? Yet, you know what's funny? I never think about other Christian denominations to be cult. I just think they don't understand certain things. But, um, but today's topic is about a, I think his name is Need God Net, who's going to be talking about whether he thinks, based on his understanding of the Bible, that Seventh-day Adventists are cult or Christian. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And please, if you have any question, you can put it in the comment section and I will do my best to either make a video about it or respond directly. So, let's see what we have today to work with. And I think today's topic is going to be, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because I'm sure there was another group that already made a video. But there is actually one or two things I wanted to touch about today. And the first one is going to be soul sleep. What does the Bible say about soul sleep? Do we have a soul or are we a soul? Is the soul immortal or is the soul mortal? So let's take a quick look at his take on this one. All right, where are we? There we go. All right. Number three, soul sleep. The Adventist Church teach that you don't have an immortal soul. So if you die, you're asleep until Judgment Day. Now the Bible does speak about people's bodies sleeping, but never about someone's soul sleeping. The Bible even speaks in Revelation 6 about these people who were killed for their faith in Jesus. And they're already in heaven and they're asking God, O oh, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? They're not asleep if they're speaking. There is no soul sleep. Number four. Okay, so we're going to dissect this. If you guys understand everything, First of all, here's the first thing I wanted to mention. That's why I asked the question, do we have a soul or are we a soul? Let's see again what he said. That you don't have an immortal soul. So if you die, you're... Okay, so based on what he just said, that Seventh-day Adventists don't believe you have an immortal soul, most likely in my, from what he just said, that means... We are not the soul, but we actually have a soul. But let's see what the Bible actually says when it comes to soul. So, I'm going to... Oops, come on. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to go to the book of Genesis because we have to go to... Um, from the beginning, you know... We gotta go to the beginning to find out what the Bible actually says. Do we have a soul or are we a soul? So in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, and verse number 7, the Bible says, After God made all the animals and everything else, in verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So, it didn't say and man now has a soul. But it says man 
became a living soul. That means body, dust of the ground, plus breath of life equal a living soul. So if you become a living soul, that means you can be dead. Does that make any sense? If you become a living soul, so then the people that are dead are basically dead souls, in a sense. So in that case, the idea that we have a soul wouldn't make any sense. Or the idea that souls are immortal is actually unbiblical because the Bible says God alone has immortality. Now, let, 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 let's just you know, stop right here and let's go back to his story or to his understanding of what a soul actually is. You're asleep until judgment day. Now, the Bible does speak about people's bodies sleeping, but never about someone's soul sleeping. The Bible even speaks in Revelation 6 about these people who... Okay, the Bible never speaks about um, somebody's soul sleeping. Let's see if this is actually correct because we have to, you know, we have to look at the scriptures and see if it is true that, you know, Bible doesn't mention anything about soul sleeping. We're going to go to the book of Genesis again. In chapter 12, and I'm going to read a few verses here and there, but... I want you to guys to understand. Um, where is it at? Okay, let me just remove this one. Okay. Verse number 5. Verse number 5, chapter 12. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. So, you know, let's actually see, what, do, what, what does that mean? Souls, verse number five. And the souls, right here, souls, what does that mean? This means a properly a breathing creature. So it can be animal or it can be people. So, as long as you are a breathing creature, you are a soul. You see, Bible speaks about souls, not that we have a soul. Let's keep on going. I'm going to go to some more. Verse number 13. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that I it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live. So if he says that his soul shall live, that means it can die. Okay? So this is this this is where I understand that there are many sincere Christians in the world, but they do not study the Bible to understand not understand that. They don't study enough, I should say. They want to just take what they hear, but like the Bereans, they don't go and study. Unlike the Bereans. See that same number, 5H5315 is the same one in verse number 5 for souls. So, if Abraham is saying to, uh, to Sarah, say to the prince of Egypt, to, to the king, I am your sister, so that way he doesn't kill me. Well, if he is saying that it may be well with me, meaning he is the soul. Not that he has a soul, but he is a soul. Now, I, wanna, I don't want to go to every single, uh, because there's a lot of verses. Now, there are some places where, you get, where the Bible interchange the word soul for spirit. And I think it's going to be in Genesis chapter 35. Let me go to 35. 35? Or is it 46? 
verse 18 was that the one with the death yes okay now this is one verse that people actually might use to say that you actually have a soul verse 18 and it came to pass as her soul was in departing for she died that she called his name Benoni but her father, his father called him Benjamin. You see that word right here? When she gave up the ghost, see, soul, properly a breathing creature that is animal or vitally and used very widely in the little accommodated or figurative sense, bodily or mental. And appetite, beast, body, content, da 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 Life, lost man. Okay, I'm not sure what that's in there. Okay. So, one of the verse that might be used is this one to say, well, because she was dying, her soul departed. No. When she gave up the ghost, Bible says, when we die, the body goes back to the ground where it came from, and the breath of life goes back to God who gave it. Which is why everybody died the same way. The body goes back to the ground and the breath of life goes back to God. Why? Because in Genesis chapter 2, we understand to become a soul, you have to have body plus breath of life. So we are the soul. Now, he is referencing, now, he says that souls cannot die, right? Souls are immortal. But in the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, there you go, verse number 4, the Bible says, Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, shall die. So even you tell me, the Bible doesn't talk about soul sleep at all. Where well, God says, the soul that sin shall die. Now it's either God is a liar, or he is a liar. But in that case, I think he is the liar, and not God. Now, let's see what he has to use to convince those that are that the soul is not actually dead. Let's see here. They were killed for their faith in Jesus. And they're already in heaven. And they're asking God, O oh, sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? They're not asleep if they're speaking. There is no soul sleep. Number okay, this is a great misunderstanding of this man right here. Quoting the book of Revelation, chapter 6. So let's go there actually. Let's go to chapter 6 of Revelation. Chapter 6. I'm gonna go, let me go to the, let me go to that. Okay, verse number 9. Bible says, now verse number 10 says, and they cried with a loud voice saying, how long? Okay, nope. Verse number 6, verse number 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost, not, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, our, our guy right here, Neil Garnett, is confused as to what he just read. Let me tell you why. One, what is John looking? John is looking into the future. God is showing John what's going to happen in the future. How do I know that? Because when you read chapter 1 to chapter 5, God is telling John, come and I will show you what would happen in the last days, meaning in the future. And in chapter 6, Bible begins like this, and I saw the lamb 
open one of the seals. Now, if you're going to take verse number 9 and 10 literally, then I should also take number 1 literally, saying there's an actual lamb who actually opened the seals. Is it really literal or is it symbolic? Use your common sense. In the book of Revelation, there's a lot of prophetic uh, or symbolic terms that equate to literal things. The same way the lamb is not an actual lamb, but it represents Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the real person, not an actual lamb. So here, the lamb is not an animal, it is Jesus Christ. He opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. What did he see? He and I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And then, verse number 3 says, And when he had opened the second seal, I heard a second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that is red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. And then the third seal, he said what? There was a black horse, and he that sat on it had a pair of balances in his hand. Verse 6, Fourth, fourth seal, there was a, as you know, it's still the same one, it's still the same horse. Verse number seven, fourth seal, and I saw another beast, what? A pale horse, a pale horse, and his name, that thought on him was death and hell, followed with him. Now, are you going to say that those are literal horses that did this in a literal time? No. Those are symbolic. The white horse represents something. It represents a time when the gospel went out and it went to conquer. And why? Because we know in the apostolic time, when the message, when the message went out, people were baptizing 3,000 souls. Actually, the Bible says that. That 3,000 souls were baptized into the church. I think it's in the book of Acts chapter 2. Now, a black horse means another thing. A red horse means another thing. And a pale horse means another thing. Now, the pale horse is the time when people were dying because of the truth. Because the next verse, after the pale, it says right here in verse number 8, for the pale horse, that the name of him that sat on it was death and hell. Is there really a person whose name is death and hell? Come on, man. So this guy, he thinks that what he just read is literal. When No, this is a, a symbolic way of telling you there was a period of time this thing happened. Now, let's keep on going. Verse number, okay, and a fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, and with death, and beast of the earth. And he opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar the name, the souls of them that were slain to the, for the word, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And they were saying, How long, O Lord, thou dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? Now, he is saying that, Hey, if they are speaking, then they are not dead. Well, I'm going to challenge that because there are many times in the Bible where God uses those terms when the person is dead. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. Genesis, not chapter 2, I'm bad, chapter 4. Let's look at the story of Cain and Abel. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten the man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of ground. And in the process of time, when it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the fruit of the ground and offered it unto the Lord, and Abel, he also brought of the first thing of the flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect upon 
unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain, verse number 8, talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him, or slew him. The Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? Uh, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto Cain, What? What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me. The question for you, need God net. When God told when God told Cain, the blood, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me. Are you now gonna say that the bl blood is immortal? Because God said the voice of the blood of Abel is crying. So does that mean Abel is no longer dead? Does that mean now for some reason Abel went straight to heaven? Oh man. Because if when you die you actually went to heaven, like you assume, in the book of John, when Mary said to Jesus, when Jesus said, no, he's asleep, he's not dead. And Mary says, well, I know, you know, he will be resurrected at the, t at the time of judgment. When John, when Jesus resurrected Lazarus, man, I wonder why Lazarus didn't say anything of what he saw in heaven. So I want, I want, I want, I would like everyone to understand this. The idea that your soul is in heaven. First of all, you don't have a soul. You are the soul. In that chapter six that he referenced, it is not about literally people cry out to God. It is in a symbolic way, the same way when God told Cain. The voice of Abel's blood is crying unto him. Is it literally the blood is crying unto God? No, it's in the same Bible and saying, Cain, I know you killed Abel. I know you killed Abel. So no, people, don't be deceived into believing that um, when you die, your soul goes on to live somewhere else. No, 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 no. You or the soul, because Jesus himself said to Ezekiel, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, in Ezekiel chapter 18, Bible says, verse number 4, Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul can die. Soul is not immortal. As a matter of fact, let me go further. And I'm hoping to get the right verse on this one. I think it's in Matthew chapter 10. Verse number 28. Oh, I'm in Ezekiel. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 28. Bible says, this is Jesus speaking. Fear them not, verse number 26, fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what he hear in the ear, that preach ye unto the housetop, and fear them not, 28, which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, 
but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Soul is not immortal. What that means is, no, let me actually look for that word right here. Verse 28, verse 26, 26, and verse 28, which kill a body and not the soul. Soul is that word. You see that word right here, soul? It means breath. That is the spirit. So, when the Bible, like I said earlier, when the Bible uses soul sometimes, it does. It means the breath of life. When you die, remember, we are the soul. When we die, the body goes back to the ground and the breath of life goes back to God. At the end of time, God will destroy the soul. Why? Because both body and breath will be destroyed in hell. So the idea that soul is immortal, I don't know where they got that part from. We are the souls. Body plus breath of life. Chapter 2 of Genesis verse number 7. Chapter 2 of Genesis verse number 7. Body plus breath of life equals a living soul. The same way it's a living soul, it can also be a dead soul. I'm hoping at least that part is pretty, I would say, better to understand. Because I want people to understand that the idea that, you know, soul just wander somewhere in heaven. No, 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 no. When you die, the body goes back to the ground and the breath of life goes back to God who gave it. We are the souls. We are the souls. Anyway, guys, let me guys know what you think about this. Comment down, comment down below. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit that, don't forget to hit that like button, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. If you have any question, you can put it down in the comment section down below, and I'll do my best to respond to you as quickly as possible. Again, it was your TV. Until then, bye for now.